Pitch TV show. We're bringing you more interviews, more videos, and more product reviews than anyone else on the planet. Sit back and get ready. Here's the Fast Pitch TV show. Hello, I'm your host, Gary Leland, and this is the Fast Pitch TV show. Now, if you've never been to my website, please take a look at fastpitch.tv. Now, that's the home of the Fast Pitch TV network and the place to find all of my softball videos, softball blogs, and other tools that I make for softball. It's the largest network for free softball video and blog posts on the internet. Fast Pitch, that is. Now, I'm always adding new shows all the time, so please take a look but wait till after you finish watching this episode. Hey, I also want to tell you some, some great, great news, or it's, it's great, I think, about my magazine. It's the Fast Pitch Softball Magazine. Well, it's now available on the iPhone, the iPod Touch, and, of course, the iPad, which it always has been. This, this is really cool. I'm really pumped about this because, you see, the, you can see the magazine. Just go to the App Store on your iPhone, iPod Touch, or iPad, and search Softball. And it should come up as one of the first few, so just scroll over till you find it. And the best news is if you're already subscribed to the magazine on your iPad, well, you're now automatically subscribed on your iPhone or iPod Touch or whatever, your other Apple devices. New issues of the magazine come out the first week of every month, and we have a great, great group of writers, well, like Olympians Kat Osterman, Natasha Watley, and many, many more. It's a great writing staff. You really need to visit fastpitchmagazine.com today. This is a great coaching tool. You are going to love it. Now this week I bring you another session from Softball Con in Louisville, Kentucky. And if you're not familiar with Softball Con, like I say every week, you haven't been watching this show, you should check out their website though at softballcon.net. It's a great clinic that's held in Louisville, Kentucky every January. Now this week we have part two of a clinic by David Williams. He's the head coach at Moorhead State University. Now, today's clinic is titled, Keep Your Head in the Game. Now, if you've not seen part one yet, you may want to go back and watch part one first, which you can watch at fastpitch.tv slash 241. Okay, now let's go watch part two. Uh, so, you have to look at the field, okay? I mentioned things like how deep the fence is. So obviously, why is that important? Well, the deeper the fence, the bigger the gaps, the more we can run. The deeper the fence, fly ball, the more of an opportunity we may have to tag up and score. Um, I talked about the grass. How short is the grass? Well, if it's higher, it's gonna roll slower. So be aware of that. If it's short, it's gonna play faster. So you need to tell your outfield they need to cut off the gaps really well and back each other up. But if you got a lot of speed and they got a really short outfield that plays really fast and you get it in the gap, you want to keep your runners going. Okay? One other thing to pay attention to, pay attention to the elements. I usually do not hesitate to send a runner from second on a ball hit to the outfield like a routine single if the grass is wet. A lot has to happen with a wet ball. They have to field it cleanly, they have to make the throw cleanly, usually to the cutoff, and then the cutoff has to take that wet ball out of their glove, and then they have to turn and make another clean throw. So a couple different things have to happen here, okay? A lot of things have to happen. So pay attention to the ground conditions. Is it wet? Is it muddy? Pay attention to their infield. If it's really muddy, your infield's probably not going to play as fast, okay? And it's going to be really slow, which opens up the opportunity to bump for you. The only bad part is that bump's going to slow your runner down just a little bit. But it's going to slow the ball down, and the defender might not get to it as quick. If it's a really fast infield, you bunt, it may take off too quick, you may not have a chance to get there. Okay? Most of the time when we're bunting, we're just trying to move a runner over though. We're not really trying to bunt for a hit a lot of times, unless you got a really fast slide. But pay attention to the field conditions. Communicate those things to your, to your players. Now, I do have on there effectively communicate to runners and hitters. I talk about communicating things about the field, things that you see. Typically, when we go somewhere new, before the game, I give the little speech, okay, I see the grass is this high, I see this, I see how deep the fence is. 
I see how the ball is going to play off in the corners. I see how deep the backstop is. But what I mean by this right here is when you see something as a coach that your hitters need to adjust on, tell them. As soon as the defense comes off the field between innings, when you're switching out in a half inning, as soon as they come off, tell them. Look, last inning while we're hitting, we're getting too far out on our front side, we're dropping our hands, we're chasing the rise, whatever it may be. We need to protect the outer half and take it to right field. Whatever you have to tell them, communicate to them. I don't care if you tell them the same thing every inning. It goes back to my comment a minute ago. You can tell them all, but somebody's not gonna get it. So keep saying it. Hopefully the fifth time it'll sink in, okay? So communicate to your runners. Communicate to them um, when they're on base. Okay, if I have runners at second and third, if I have runners at second and third, I'm always talking to them. If I got a runner on second and there's no outs, and there's nobody behind them just to run on second, I tell them, no outs, no force behind you. Read it. And we practice those things. You know, depending on where it's hit, how hard it's hit, are we gonna take off the third? I also tell them get a really big lead, and this is where I look to see where the shortstop is, the second baseman is. We're going to try to draw a throw. I want to see what you're going to do. Same thing if we got first and third situations. I'll play a little bit, see if you're going to have to play on, see if maybe you'll throw straight through, if you're going to throw it back down to third, or if you're going to try something tricky. I'll play with it a little bit. I want to see what you're going to do. Because if I think you're going to do this nine times out of ten, and I see a pattern forming, the minute you try to throw through and think my third baseman's staying put, my third baseman's going, or not my third baseman, my runner at third is going home. Communicate with your runners. They get to third base. Tell them, tell them the outs, tell them the situation. If there's one out, let them know. Tag it up on a fly ball. That's one thing I see people miss more than anything. I go to travel tournaments, I watch travel games. I see kids running on third base, less than two outs, pop fly to the outfield. They're hanging out. That's a free run. Tag up. You just hurt your teammates' batting average because you didn't give them a sacrifice. I might have to hit somebody if I was the one to hit the fly ball and you didn't score. You just cost me an at bat. So communicate with them. Tell them one out, deep fly ball, we're tagging. Ground ball, right side, we're scoring. Ground ball, left side, if it's soft in front of you, take off. If it's hard, hold, pass ball. I usually tell most people, unless it's the catcher or the first baseman, pass ball, it's up to you. Now, if it's catcher, first baseman, I usually tell them stay put. Don't go anywhere, okay? <laughs> but communicate those things to them every time someone gets there. Don't tell them one time. If they're three for three, don't just tell them the first time they get there because the situations change throughout the game. Situations change throughout the game. If I sit there and the th if, if third base is here and the third baseman's right here in between pitches, the third baseman never goes anywhere, I tell my runner to hang out, to stay here. The minute she gets behind you, you take off. Get back into that bag. Don't let her get behind you. But if she's not going to move, there's no point in you staying near the bag. Get a lead. Okay? People get lazy. People get lazy. You'll see a lot of times, middle infielders, sometimes they get lazy. They'll get lazy, they don't back up the pitcher on the throwback from the catcher. And if the catcher's being lazy, lobbing it in, and if I'm the pitcher, third base is here, I catch it and I turn my back to third base, you know, or I turn my back this way, and that runner at second's got a big lead, well, I've got a delayed steal on him. Okay? Pay attention to those things. If you got a runner on third and nobody else is on, and your batter gets walked, and they're not paying attention, send them to second. Force a throw, maybe you score that run from third. I'm not saying get cute all the time. I'm just saying be able to recognize things and communicate things to your runners. Let them know situations. Let them know if there's two outs and they're on second base, they're gone at contact and they're not letting up. You're trying to score, okay? They're gonna have to see you and you're physically going to have to stop them. You're going to have to get down the line. You're going to have to make sure they see you. That's another thing I didn't put on here. 
As a third base coach, you need to be seen. You need to make sure your runners know where you're at. You need to make sure your signals are visible. And you need to make sure that they understand what is going on. So if I give them a signal, I want acknowledgement that they know what's going on. Now, if it's something basic, like if I give them a signal, I tell them to bunt, I don't want them doing anything to acknowledge it. But if we're doing something special, they have to acknowledge it. If they're just swinging away, if it's a bunt, if it's something like that, don't acknowledge it. Because now you're letting everybody know something's going on. Because eventually they're going to pay attention to people giving little signals. Okay, it could be as simple as just touching the bill of your hat but, or your helmet. But if you do that a lot, people are going to catch on. Okay, people are going to catch on. I see things all the time, like if a catcher sits there and does this, one pitch and then does this the next pitch, well, every time they do this, they're throwing it inside, and every time they do this, they're throwing it outside. It doesn't take long to figure that out, okay? So those are other things you can pick up on. Tell your dugout. Communicate that to your dugout. Tell your dugout, watch the catcher. Tell your hitter. Make sure your runner at second is signaling location to your batter. Trust me, it will help you, okay? So signal location to your battery. All right, we're going to move to uh, the role of the first base coach. All right, first base coach. First base coach. Once again, we talked about uh, understanding limitations of the defenders as a third base coach. First base coach has to know the same thing. Because if we get a ball hit in the gap, or we got a ball hit somewhere where somebody has to make a long throw, your first base coach has to know to send them. You have to know to send them, okay? So your first base coach has to know the limitations as well. If, let's say, first base crashes, we show bunt, first base crashes, second base has to come over and cover the bag, we don't get the bunt down, we don't want the catcher to throw in to the second baseman and get our runner because they got too big of a lead. So as a first base coach, if you understand the limitations of that second baseman, how quick they are, how far they are from first base, we know how much time we have to tell our runner to get back, how big of a lead they can get. Um, we want to pay attention to signals as much as a runner. If you're the first base coach, pay attention to the signals too. Drives me nuts when a coach walks up and says, hey, did you give us a steal? You should have been paying attention because you should be the one in the runner's ear making sure they got it. Because if they missed it, you need to be telling them, hey, you missed the signal, okay? Missed signals drive me crazy. It's not complicated, pay attention. And then they want to tell you, well, I thought you touched this. I thought you touched that. The signal's been the same all year. I didn't switch them up just for this game. So your first base coach has to pay attention to the signals just as much as that runner. If they're not paying attention, then we might have a problem, okay? We might have a problem, especially if we've got some kind of trick play going on or if it's an important situation in the game and we get an out because no one, nobody was paying attention. If me and the batter are on the same page but the first base coach and the runner aren't on the same page and we get an out because of it and it costs us a chance to score a run and we lose, then we have a problem. So a first base coach has to pay attention just as much as uh, the runner. And just like the third base coach, the first base coach has to communicate to the runner on situations as well. Every time they get to first base, you talk to them. Talk to them. You tell them, look, you got a force here, it's on the ground, get into second, get there, get down. Break it up. Fly ball, go halfway, read it, okay? Talk to them about the situations. Tell them, pass ball, you better be standing on second. Don't be standing here. Let them know what the situation is. If there's two outs, they're gone on contact no matter what. Don't even look at the ball. You just run until the third base coach stops you, okay? Let them know those situations. Let them know what's going on. Let them know what uh, has to be done. So the role of a first base coach, a lot of people think you just stand there and point. 
you have just as much of a responsibility in a lot of cases as the third base coach. Sometimes as a first base coach, you can see things going on with the catcher. You can see things going on with the pitcher, maybe where the pitch location is that a third base coach can't see from that side of the field. So you have to communicate that as well. You have to say, hey, I noticed this. We gotta let the team know. You have to communicate those things just as much as the third base coach does. Softball, baseball are individual sports within a team concept because you field the ball by yourself, you hit by yourself. But there is no way that one person could win an entire softball game or baseball game. You can't pitch without a catcher. You can't play defense without defenders behind you. And nobody's going to hit you in if you get on base and you're the only one on the line. So as much as it takes everybody to win a game, you need to make sure each individual is doing their part. The last one here is a bench coach. Now, if you're fortunate enough to have a bench coach, I know a lot of times you might have the head coach and then there's one assistant. But if you're fortunate enough to have a bigger staff than that, obviously not everybody can coach a base. You can't have three coaches on the field, you can only have two. So if you have a bench coach or a multiple bench coach, give them duties. Don't let them just stand there and, and joke around. Give them things to do, okay? Make sure they know what's going on. The biggest role of a bench coach, in my opinion, is keeping the dugout engaged. I don't want to see Susie over here playing around in the dugout. I don't want to see her looking in the stands to see if her boyfriend came to the game, okay? You make sure she's up on that fence cheering on her teammates. Your job is to make sure that no one is unengaged, make sure no one's goofing off, and my personal pet peeve, no one pulls a cell phone out. I don't allow cell phones at the field. I, they're not allowed in the gate. I don't want to see them. But I don't know how many times I'll go to a travel tournament and I'll be sitting in the stands and I'll see a kid walk over there between innings, look in their bag, you see them on their cell phone, thinking the coach doesn't notice. The coach may not see it that time, but they'll see it at some point. Okay? The bad part is the college coach noticed, okay? So make sure the dugout's engaged. Make sure they're in the game. Make sure they know the situations. Because if they have to go in, they need to know what's going on. We talked at the very beginning about prioritizing your substitutions. So if I put in, I don't know, I'll make up a name, Betty. If Betty's going into pinch run, Betty better know how many outs there are, what inning it is, what the score is, and how important that run is. In my opinion, every run is equally important. I don't care if you're up 10 to nothing. That next run is just as important as a tied ball game and the winning run on second. Every run is equally important. They need to know the situation. They need to know what's going on. Um, they need to be aware if they go into pinch hit, what the pitcher has been throwing. They need to know if they go into pinch run, that the catcher's tried to throw down here. They need to know all those things. So make sure not only you're keeping the dugout engaged, but you are um, making them aware of the situations. Now, if your bench coach is your pitching coach, which is our situation, Make it a point to tell the pitching coach to get with the pitcher and the catcher every half inning and talk about those in-game adjustments. And even if no adjustments necessary, if there is nothing that's going on, if your girl's got a no-hitter going, you just say, hey, good job. You keep throwing that. Give them a pat on the back. Make sure they know that you've recognized the job they're doing. Okay? So you want to make sure that if it is your pitching coach, they're discussing things with the pitcher and catcher every inning. Sometimes it may just be the catcher mostly saying, hey, where's the strike zone? Where's the umpire like? Because you'll be amazed how much the umpires will tell your catcher in the middle of a game if your catcher's willing to just have a conversation with them. 
they will say, hey, if you put it right here, I'll call it a strike. And your catcher will come in and say, hey, they just told me if we put it a little bit farther here, it's a strike. So make sure they're engaging that. The next day, uh, like I said, give them a job. Make sure they have something to do. Okay? Um, whether it's keeping track of substitutions for both sides, letting me know who subbed in, who re-entered, whatever the case may be. They might give you a free out. If they sub somebody in and they re-entered the person but never reported it and they come to the plate, and your bench coach says, hey, they never re-entered it. You just got a free out. Because a lot of times I may not catch that because we come off the field on defense. I talk to the team. I walk straight to third base. The umpire comes over and reports the substitutions. I don't know who checked back in. So if my bench coach is on top of that, they may be the MVP that day. They might have gotten us a free out on their best player who got subbed out the pinch run and they never re-entered her. And we just got a free out. That person didn't come up. We didn't have that threat of them getting a hit. So make them do something. Keep track of substitutions. Keep track of pitching charts, spray charts, whatever it may be. Now, I keep a couple charts. I'm not a fan of too many of them because it gets a little confusing at times. But um, keep track of things. Now, I know everybody's situation is a little different. I've coached high school. I've coached travel ball, I coached Division II, and now I coach Division I. So I've coached almost every level, and I know every situation is a little different. So I know in some cases, rules may affect some of your decisions. Availability of assistant coaches may affect some of your decisions. But whatever the case may be, try to formulate some type of plan for whatever your staff is, formulate some kind of plan for whatever allows within your rules. Uh, it's been a while since I coached high school, but uh, when I coached high school, you could re-enter a non-starter. You could take them out and re-enter. Can you still do that? Okay. That's a big rule, I think, that can play into your advantage. If you got somebody that's a good a hitter, but they can't play a lick of defense, you can get them two at-bats a game. <coughs> To me, that's huge. Um, so I think take advantage of your rules. Obviously, in travel ball, you get courtesy runners for a pitcher, catcher. Um, I know some states in high school have that. Take advantage of that. Let the same kid run three times. Do what you got to do to win. But um, whatever the situation is, whatever the situation is, um, make sure that you have roles and a strategy for your entire staff. Um, just as a side note, um, I've only been in Kentucky for a year and a half. Uh, I took the job at Morehead State a year and a half ago. So I know a lot of people in this room are Kentucky high school coaches. Um, I don't really know the state of Kentucky that well, but I would like to. So feel free to shoot me an email. Feel free to introduce yourself. Um, if you've got a player you want us to look at, we'll be more than happy to look at them. I know we send out a lot of emails about camps, things like that that we do um, to the Kentucky high school coaches from their database. We send a lot of things out to travel ball coaches. We get from the books um, that we get at tournaments. But um, if you have a player that has a dream of playing in college, help them realize their dream. Help them find that. I've been on the other end of this, okay? I was a high school coach and I was a travel coach before I was a college coach. So I've been on all the sides of recruiting. I got recruited as a player. So I know what it's like to be recruited as a player. I know what it's like as a coach to get your player recruited. And I know what it's like to recruit players. Whether your, your player can play Division I or wherever, if they want to play, there's a place for every one of your players to play. It may be at a junior college, it may be D3, it may be NAIA, but if they want to play bad enough, there is a roster spot somewhere in this country for them. Okay? I'm not saying they'll get to play, but there's a roster spot somewhere in this country for them. So I really think it's important as high school coaches, as travel coaches, help your players realize their dreams. Because I know when I was a high school coach, a travel coach, I got really excited when one of my players got signed. 
So help them out. That's what you're in it for. You're in it to help make them better people, help them develop, and help them realize their dreams. Um, does anybody have any questions before I let you guys go? We're out of time. Questions? All right, thank you. Appreciate Do you need a softball bat? Do you want to save $30? Softballjunk.com is offering an additional $30 discount off the price of all non-sale softball bats on their website. That's right, $30. So the next time you buy a bat, go to softballjunk.com and enter the code FPTV30 during checkout. And wham, you just put a cool $30 in your pocket. Welcome back. That last short clip you just saw, well, that was my daughter, Amanda, and she was telling you about my website, softballjunk.com. Make sure and write down the code number FPTV30 because when you buy a softball bat on my website, you can enter that code at checkout and save yourself $30. And you can use the code over and over and over and over. It's, it's a really great deal. You just need to remember the code, and that is FPTV30. Now, if you enjoy the show, all I ask is that you at least check out my website, softballjunk.com, the next time you're looking for softball equipment, whether it's bats, gloves, or whatever. Now, if I offer a competitive price, well, please buy from me and show some support for the show. It's a great way to support what I'm doing here and it really doesn't cost you any extra. It might even save you some money. Well, I hope you enjoyed David's Clinic and please tell your friends about the Fast Pitch TV show. Hey, tell them about the code. Save them some money on their next bat. So until next time, this is Gary Leland saying goodbye and thanks for watching. This show is a member of the Fast Pitch TV network. See all our shows and blogs at www.fastpitch.tv. Thank <laughs> you.